Okay, all right. I uh, have the Old Miss Rebels at home, 11 a.m. kick. Um, that'll be the earliest we played so far, so we'll have to, to be ready for that. When you look at Old Miss offensively, really the, the thing that stands out to me is their offensive skill. I think uh, at the receiver, I think they're as good as anybody in the league. I think their quarterback is uh, is a guy that can really make things happen when things break down. Um, you know, he has a little Johnny Manziel. Uh, in him as far as being able to create things on his own. Um, and he's a very good athlete. Defensively, uh, Wesley McGriff is our defense coordinator, which is an excellent coach. He was with us last year, um, you know, does a super job uh, as far as that goes. Um, and, and really, I think it'll be a, a good test for us. You know, I know they had a tough game last week. Um, we, we are expecting uh, their best. Uh, our guys understand that they are talented and uh, we've got to be ready to play. And, and our message has been get better uh, each week. And I think we had a very solid game overall last week. And our challenge has been to continue to get better. And on a side note, you know, one of the all-time Auburn greats, Buddy Davison, is going to have his seventh 700 consecutive games. I think that's a really big deal. It's meant a lot to Auburn for a long period of time, really devoted his life to Auburn. So I just kind of wanted to give him a shout out. And I think that's very impressive as far as that goes. So questions? Do you try to rest Cameron Petway as much as you can this week, considering I mean, he obviously looks slow in that? Yeah. You know, I, th I think, uh, you know, with him and KJ, we got to be very smart with those guys in practice. We'll see where we're at, um, you know, as it gets closer to the game. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, Cam Martin was also, you know, he was banged up going the last game too. We were able to rest him. I think that's good. Um, but I really expect all the guys, you know, to be ready to play. It's just a matter of, you know, how healthy we can get them before the game starts. Yeah, you know, we talked about that at the very first, um, you know, of the season. That was really one of our goals to be more balanced and. The last two weeks we've done that, and we were able to hit some explosive plays in the past game. Uh, really, we were able to play with tempo too, um, and I think that, that's a combination that was that was really good. That we got to continue to build upon those things. Gus, is there any concern at all that you, you is it, or I guess a better question is what causes it that you haven't been able to run the ball consistently as consistently inside? Yeah, you know, I, I think there's a couple factors. You know, one is, you know, we've had a, a lot of different lineups up front, and the communication and working together uh, in front of each other is very important. I think you will see that uh, continue to improve um, now that we've kind of got our lineup set up front. Uh, you know, we're planning on having that same lineup this week as we did last week, um, and I think we'll be able to build upon things up front. You know, he's a competitor. I mean, uh, you know, he hadn't been 100 percent, you know, uh, any of the games yet. And I know that's been frustrating for him. But, you know, we've got to get him healthy. And uh, if we get him healthy, I think, uh, you know, he'll be in a good spot. Have you, do you, does anything surprise you when you look around the league and see some of the scores of 363? You all have last two SP scores. Does that reflect maybe a lack of parity in the SEC to you? You know, I think in our league, each week is unique to itself. And I don't care who you're playing. Um, you know, I think anybody's capable of beating anybody. And, you know, some weeks you see the lopsided scores and all that. But uh, I don't think it's, you know, lack of parity. I just think it's week to week. Yes, if you look at the, right now, the top three teams in the league, plus most of the top teams in the country, they're all playing really good defense now. Yeah. Is that something that's kind of going back the other way from where it was a few years ago? You know, it, it, I think it looks that way. I mean, you know, there's the offenses, they're, they're so explosive, and, uh, you know, everybody's playing with tempo. Everybody's, you know, doing spread out stuff, and I think the top defenses are the ones that, you know, can handle that. And it looks, as of right now, that, that just like you said, uh, and I'm very pleased with our defense right now. I think that is, uh, is, is great to have, and I think we can keep building and keep improving. Can you talk about Stephen Roberts? He looks like he's a different player. Than yeah. He really does. He's playing with more confidence. I thought last year, especially the second half of the of, of last year, he started playing very good.
but he, he's a senior. He's one of those guys that's been there, done that, played multiple games, experienced, and he's very instinctive, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. I think you see that really all across the defense side of the football. I, I think they're playing with a lot of confidence, um, you know, and they're playing very physical. You talked about his play on the punt when the ball hit Kyle Davis. Yeah, that was, that was an unfortunate deal as far as hitting one of our players, but uh, he made a very instinctive play. That was a, a really a big play in the game that – you know, that uh, kind of goes unnoticed. But uh, that was a big play. Yes, you talked about the change in offensive line. And Mike Horton's been blocked at left guard for a young guy. What has he been able to do kind of to be a fixture? Yeah, I thought he played his best game last week. And, you know, the, the experience around him, he was he was surrounded with two seniors, you know, on either side. And I just think that, that really helped. And like I've said before, the, there's nothing better, especially in our league, than experience, especially up front. And uh, the fact that he has two experienced guys on both sides, uh, it definitely helped. For the defense to be achieving what it is right now, Gus, just, I mean, you guys lost four guys to the NFL last season, mm -hmm. arguably your two best defensive line. As confident as you were about Jeff or mm -hmm. Nick Coe and all that, for them to be delivering, at this point, I'm not sure there's a player on your defense who's being billed as like a potential first round pick other than maybe Jeff. Just for them to be achieving collectively this well without that one. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's really uh, you know just a team defense. Uh, you know, talked about you know how are you going to replace Carl, how are you going to replace Mon. Well, the message has been as a collective group, and that's what they've done. And uh, you know, it's been it's been you know somebody new just about every game. But you know, obviously Jeff, when his past situations is really coming on and playing at a high level. But uh, I think it's just more of a unit. Uh, the second year with Coach Steele, understanding uh, his expectations, uh, the scheme, and everything that goes with it, and he's allowing our play guys to play fast too. And uh, I think that's important. Yes, you've got four wide receivers that are averaging over 20 yards a catch. What do you feel like that's a product of right now? Is well, it I, you know, I think it's all the above, but I think more than anything, it's probably emphasis. You know, that's really uh, what chimps. Chip's emphasis has been more explosive plays, and um, you know we we've we've been able to do that the last two weeks, and it's really changed everything. So you know he'll continue to build upon those things. Uh, I think you see our wide receivers starting to to grow up and have have more confidence, and they're getting more opportunities. And the last two weeks they've seized the moment. And we just need to continue to build upon those things. You've been a part of Well, you know, each year is different, okay, and each team is different. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with the uh, a team that is able to improve. Very few teams around the country are able to improve uh, each week with the execution and getting better at who they are and what they do. And uh, that's really the formula. Now, with it, that being said, the injury factor to impact players you know, you can handle injuries a lot of times, but if it's your impact player, sometimes that causes uh, you know, that causes a little bit of a lull. But it's about getting better each week, and the teams that we've had that have done that, uh, you know, usually at the end are playing very good. Yes, can you talk about Devin Barrett and the league? Are mm -hmm. they making progress? Yes, Devin Barrett, you know, I mean, he – He's really came on, you know, they've given him short roles and, you know, I'm sure that will be added too because he's done a very good job. And Malik, I was very impressed with the way he ran hard, um, you know, at the end of the game and ran through some tackles and all that. And I think you'll see him more and more as the season goes on. How did the Prince Tag experiment at tight end go? Yeah, I mean, you know, just trying to, you know, he, he's a very talented player. And he just needs experience. And so, you know, that was a plan to play him in a little bit of the heavy set tight end last week. And he he did a solid job. Um, and then, you know, he's he's still getting reps at left tackle. I mean, that's his primary position. And, and he's going to be a really good one before it's all said and done. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you all have all seen it. I mean, the very first game, you know, he looked like a guy that hadn't played in a long time, which is to be expected. And, and that's kind of 
with all the expectation, I tried to lay the groundwork before the season started that we need to let the guy grow a little bit. We need to let him get ex some experience before we start really, you know, judging him. And he got better, you know, obviously the second game, I mean, you know, um, that was a very tough experience, um, you know, for him and everybody. And, and then the last three weeks, you really started to see him kind of get more comfortable and uh, get more of a command of the offense. And so he's been very efficient. And we got to we got to continue that. Um, you know, when we protect him, I think he's he's got good decision making. And um, you know, I think he just needs more experience. I mean, he's still like a freshman as far as game experience is concerned. And so we got to keep that in mind. And but uh, I've been very impressed with him the last three weeks. Do you see a time when you would have a package from a league on a regular basis? You know, we'll see where that goes and, and what Chip wants to do with that. You know, it, it's been good to get Malik in the game the last two weeks. And obviously that one explosive run that he made was really something. And uh, so we'll, we'll see where, where that goes and what Chip wants to do with that. You know, I mean, that's 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 really, really high. But, you know, we knew he's a very talented quarterback when we recruited him. Um, we knew he could throw it. And then obviously, you know, being with him in the spring and fall camp, he's a guy that can make all the throws. But it's you got to do it uh, against game situations. I mean, really, it's sometimes it's tough to complete 82 or 83 percent on air. But, you know, he's been able to do that, and and that was impressive. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, he was with our players and, and he does know personnel. But, you know, some of our guys obviously have improved since last year. And the fact that, you know, Chip's calling the plays and, and, and we are different in a lot of ways, um, you know, it's it's not as like you would think. But, you know, he's definitely familiar. I've got a lot of respect for Wesley McGriff. He's an excellent coach. He's an excellent person. And uh, I know he'll have his guys prepared. I know every coach worries about a, you know, a letdown game. Some sort yeah. during the season. You know, a few years ago, he had like a Texas A&M team come in here that just gotten blown out by Alabama mm -hmm. and then beat you guys. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss coming off a similar situation. Yeah. They were blown out. They're coming in. Yeah. How do you approach a game like this where the human side of players are going, you know, they just got blown out. They look like something. Yeah, like and, and I think it's kind of what we talked about earlier is each week is unique in its own right, especially in our league. You can't take anything for granted. And we talked about that with our players. Our, our leaders understand that. You can turn on the film and you can see they're a talented team. Um, you know, they're very scary on offense with, with their receivers and their quarterback throwing the ball down the field. Defensively, um, you know, they, they run to the football. So it, we've addressed it. And like we talked about, I mean, the, the teams that are there at the end, they find a way to get up each week. And uh, But you can't buy into – what last week was, not in this league. And we, we're expecting their best, and, and that's our approach. Did you have any uh, concerns about Herb Hand going to that Mizzou game? Did you ever think about telling him just to stay home and have the surgery? Yeah, I gave him the opportunity. If, if he needed to stay home, he needed to. I was, I was very concerned. Uh, he wanted to, to, to go and be a part. Uh, he had surgery that next morning. Uh, and um, last week, you know, he, he – Took it a little easier than he had in the past. He still did a good job preparing. And uh, this week you can tell he's he's got his energy back and all that. But it says a lot about Herb that, uh, you know, he, he wanted to be there at the game. And uh, he did a good job that night too. Herb's a tough guy. Yes, can you speak to uh, Aiden Marshall's recruitment and just how he became a part of this program? Is yeah. Somebody who's kind of showed up on the roster we didn't know anything about. Mm -hmm. now he's, now he's yeah, yeah. Uh, Coach Fountain recruited him you know, for six months or so and uh, knew he was a solid punter, a guy that could come in here and compete. And, uh, you know, he's just kind of – he's been in the competition, but as of late, he, he's been very consistent. And I thought he did a very good job the other night. Um, you know, I didn't think the moment was too big, and I thought he did a solid job. Coach, uh, Carlton Davis, was that one of the better games you've seen from him? I think so. I mean, I, I think – you know, he's a guy that you see in practice, and he does that kind of stuff every day. 
And uh, now that he's healthy this year, I think you're you're really seeing what he can do. And uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Has he also been able to practice with some kind of limping off there late in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I think he got rolled up on that one uh, tackle on that speed sweep that he almost broke. Uh, but I mean, he'll practice today. Anything else? All right, good. All right thank you all.